Recently, a couple of people have been making some noise about a new AUR helper called Peru. So if you don't know, an AUR helper is basically a little application that lets you interact with the Arch user repository as if it was just a standard package repo like you'd interact with with Pac-Man, and you can install basically anything you want. Now, the reason why people have been talking about this is one, because the main maintainer who's working on this was also the main maintainer on another AUR helper called Ye, and he's decided to actually step away from that project and focus on this one instead. The second reason is because there's a couple of people who, for some reason, just don't know how to read a Reddit post and seem to think that Ye is not going to be maintained anymore. So Ye is still going to be maintained, it still has a maintainer, how if the guy who's working on Peru was the guy who's working on most of the features in Ye, so Ye is going to have less features being worked on for it. But Ye is still a really popular application on Arch Linux, so I can't imagine that people are just going to suddenly stop using it and no one's going to be working on new features. So what this basically is at its absolute core is a Rust rewrite of Ye. Now, I wouldn't be talking about it if it was just a boring Rust rewrite. There's plenty of those out there. I talk about the Rust rewrites that actually do something productive. So it takes what Ye does and basically adds a bunch more customization to it and a couple of new features that I think are definitely worth checking it out for. Now, the reason why it's written in Rust, one probably is because Rust is just the cool thing that all new devs do. And the second reason is the dev who's working on this, he likes Rust, and because he likes the language, he's going to be more likely to actually work on it. Now, if you have used Ye before, the baseline usage of it is going to be very, very similar. I will include a rundown of how Ye works towards the end of the video, but basic things like, say, Peru-S, and then, let's say, LF-Bin to actually install a package, works exactly the same way. Basically, every option that was inside of Ye does seem to also be inside of Peru. There might be some things that are missing, but I haven't noticed anything. One of the biggest differences with this is by default, when you try to actually install a new package, before it lets you go and install it, it's going to prompt you to actually look at the package build because when you install something from the AUR, it's not really audited. It's audited by the people who decide to comment, but there's a ton of things on the AUR which nobody has ever looked at. So there might be things that are malware on there. There might be other things you probably don't want to install. So what you should always do is review the package build before you install it. So if we go and press yes, that's going to then try to download that, give it a second to do that. And then it goes and basically prints it out with bat. Now, if you don't want to use bat, you can go and change it to use something like cat instead. But I do have bat installed. So as we can see, this seems to do what I would expect it to do. And then from here, we can go and install stuff like we normally would with Ye. Now, this bit can be done with Ye. However, by default, it's not actually configured to show you the review. So let's go and do the same thing over in Ye and see what it actually does. So Ye-S LF-Bin. And as we're going to see, give it one second. I guess my internet's just being a bit slow today. It's gonna prompt us to do a clean build. It's gonna prompt us to do a diff and then it's just going to go and download everything and then prompt us to actually install it without actually showing us the package build. Now, one thing that Ye doesn't let you do is audit the files besides the package build. So some AUR packages have extra build scripts. Maybe it's like a Python or a Perl script. And you probably should look at that before you actually go and install the package. So you can go and edit the package build inside of Ye by doing Ye-S, install what you want to install dash dash edit menu, but inside of Peru, we don't have the edit menu option. What we can do instead is Peru-S, LF-Bin, and then dash dash FM for file manager. And let's say I want to open it up in something like LF. And this is going to open it up inside of my terminal file manager. Just give it a second to go and download that. I think I'll just cut to when it's done actually. Now, if we go and review here, what it's going to do is open up the entire repo inside of my file manager. So I can go and look at every single file that's being downloaded with this repo. And let's say that maybe it's not malicious. Let's say there might be a bug in the build script. From here, what we can go and do is go, say, into the package build and then actually make a modification to this, go and save it. So let's go and save this now and then quit out of this. 
And then what it's going to do is ask you to proceed with the installation. We press yes, it's going to do everything like we normally would expect it to. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be an actual file manager. So if you have, say, a version of Vim or NeoVim that comes with a file manager plugin, we can go and use that as well. So let's go and run this. Now it's just using the file manager built into NeoVim. Everything works in the exact same way as it normally would. And you can go from here. Now, one of the differences I don't particularly like is when you go and do things like an update. So let's go and quit out of this. Inside of yay, if I do yay dash capital S U A, which is gonna go and prompt me to update all my AUR packages, this will let us decide exactly which ones we want to update. In the case of Peru though, it doesn't actually show you that by default. So dash S U A, give it one second. And as we're going to see, it's gonna try to review everything and then install everything at once. So what you have to do to go and fix that is include the dash dash upgrade menu option. And this will show you the exact same thing. So give it one second. Now we can do exactly the same thing as yay. And it's still going to let us do things like reviews. Now with the file manager option I mentioned before, if you need to include any options for the file manager, what you can go and do is include the dash dash FM flags argument and then list them after this point. Honestly, I would say the FM argument is reason enough to switch from yay to Peru because it makes it so much easier to properly audit what is happening in the repos, not just looking at the package build and then trusting that everything else is going to be perfectly fine. Now, when I say these applications are very similar in the states they're in right now, I actually mean that. So if you go and scroll through, say, the man page for yay and the man page for Peru side by side, it'll be pretty difficult to actually spot things that different between the two of them really the only easy ones to notice are the fm arguments and the bat related arguments most of the stuff though is exactly the same so it's not like you're going to be losing features by moving from peru to yay because peru is in version i think 1.1 and i presume that version 1.0 was feature parity with yay now when it comes to configuring peru it's done in a very straightforward way and all of the documentation isn't in this man page. It's going to be in manperu.conf, which is going to explain basically every single one of the options and also where the default configuration file is located and where you should store yours as well. So mine is going to be stored in this path right here. So .config slash peru slash peru.conf. So let's go to that point. So peru and then peru.conf. And in here, basically... I would recommend going and doing things like enabling the upgrade menu and also going and setting the file manager you want to use as well, just so you don't have to go and manually write that in every time. And if you are used to working with Yay, having the upgrade menu there does just make it much better to work with. Another thing you may want to enable is the news on upgrade, which as the name would suggest, tries to show you things like the update log and things that have actually changed with the software. So you can actually say, okay, do I want to update now or do I want to wait till like a later update? Basically, it just gives you more information about what you're actually installing. Besides that, I'd recommend just including the things that you always have options for. So if you, say, always want it to be sorted in a certain order, or you always have, say, the build files being cleaned down, things like that, just go and include it in this config file, and it will just make things a little bit easier. Before we end off the video, let's just do a basic rundown of how to use Peru if you've never used Yay before. So I went over how to do things like, say, Peru dash SUA to actually upgrade all of your AUR packages. But when you use Peru, it is a full wrapper around Pac-Man. So anything that can't be passed to Peru is going to be passed to Pac-Man instead. So if you want to do things like, say, upgrade all your regular packages or query your regular packages, things like that, then that will also be done with Pac-Man. We can go and check what AUR updates we have available without actually installing them by doing the Peru-Q for query, U for update, and A for AUR. Give that a second to go and download those. And there we go. If we want to go and download the package repo without actually installing it, what we can do is Peru-G for get, I'm going to say. And let's say we want to do something like download lf-bin. And that's going to go and try to download that without actually installing it. And give that one second. And if we go into here, I should have an lf-bin in here. I don't know why I just didn't search for that. lf-bin. And there we go. If we want to go and print the package build, what we can do is capital G and then P. And this is going to try to print it out with bat, as we can see here. 
And then if you wanna print out the comments on the AUR page, what you can do is instead of using the P option here, we can use the C option. And let's go just do it on the regular LF page. And as we're gonna see in just a moment, these are all the comments related to that package. So if you're happy with Yay and you don't really care about new features being added or I don't know, you just don't use an AUR helper and you just do everything manually, there's nothing I can really say to get you to actually switch to Peru, but if you just want basically Yay, but it's gonna be maintained by the main guy and you get new things added to it, just switch over to it. There's no harm in doing it. You can install it from the AUR, so just install it with Yay and then just go and use Peru to uninstall Yay. So I think that's gonna be pretty much everything for this. As always, there'll be links to everything related to the software down below. So if you wanna go and install it, there'll be a link to the AUR package down there, as well as the Git repo. And if you wanna go and say submit issues about it or work on the code base, feel free to go and do that. There'll be all the links you need in the description. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, PDD, 22 Shah, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our Leap Pray, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.